scratch had a movie house showing a whole variety of different movies. Better than sex, what lies beneath. Yes. What do you think about the movies? Do they are they are you interested in movies? I do, but I honestly don't have time to view you don't any. Go. <laughs> no. What about on television? Do you watch movies um, on television? When I have time, yes. Yeah? Why are you so busy? Work. work. What do you do? I'm a finance broker. So you um, work day and night? Day and night, <laughs> weekends, yeah, whatever it takes. What does a finance broker do? Uh, lend money for people who want to buy homes or mm -hmm. property or whatever. Yes. And how long have you been doing it? Uh, all up four years. Always wanted to do it? <laughs> no, it's never <laughs> what you want to do. You just sort of fall into it. What did you want to do when you were a little girl? I, I was undecided. Yeah? Undecided. Didn't know, so I wanted to get into some sort of legal. Did you? But yeah. I didn't want to study all my life. So. Is your family involved in finance or legal? No. What do they do? Not at all. Um, Mum's a uh, works for CASA, which uh, is Centre Against Sexual Assault. She's a counsellor, mm -hmm. and Dad's a library technician. How did they meet? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I remember at the library. <laughs> Your mum works in a stressful sort of environment. Does yes. She, does that show when she comes home? No. No. She's very good. She's very good. And you have brothers and sisters? Yes, I do. And she obviously is a nurturing sort of person. Uh, yes. Yeah? She looks at you. <laughs> yes. Does she ever tell you off? Uh, I think all fa all parents <laughs> do in some degree. Yeah. You still living at home? Yes, yeah. I am. And is there a, is this now that you're, you have your own career? Mm -hmm. Are you able to um, have the same sort of relationship with your parents as you did when you were a little girl? No. Different. Yeah. You be, you you grow up. You're different. You got more responsibilities. Work sort of taking over at the moment, especially because mm -hmm. of Christmas. Mm -hmm. You don't have much time to socialise or spend time with your family. You just want to get some rest, or you got to read up on. Mm -hmm your work so it sounds like you're pretty dedicated yes definitely you want to do a good job it's very hard now it's very competitive it's yes. very hard it's everyone's in it for themselves so you got to really look after your own back yeah so are you are you uh, um, do you sell do you have to do some um, selling or is a it little bit of selling but mainly people come to you when they want to buy a house so yeah. It's their dream, making dreams come true, I guess, to a certain extent. You it's hard, it's a lot of work. Which, which, which side of it do you get the most satisfaction out of? It? What part when of it? I ring the client and say your loan's been approved, <laughs> yeah, that's the best satisfaction. And they think you're wonderful. Yes, they do. <laughs> Is it for your own security, for your own financial security? Yeah, definitely, definitely, yeah. I think the normal standard thirty thousand dollar per annum income is not enough anymore. Standard yeah. of living, even if you just want to be on a budget, it's not enough anymore. It's, everything's just so much more expensive. And everything's a luxury now. Yeah. Little things that were before you could splurge on, yeah. it's a luxury now. So you have to work harder to keep and, uh, up. Do you get paid on results? Yes. So the, that's another. The how do I work? That's exactly right. So it's all up to me how much money I make. So. And what do you like to spend it on? Clothes. Jewelry? At this moment, I just want to buy a house. <laughs> the good old Australian dream: yeah. purchase property. Yeah. What about your parents? Don't they? How do they feel? Do they feel like you're working too hard? Would they um, like to see you married? You know, all those traditional things. No, no, things? not no? at all. Yeah, which is a good thing. They're not putting pressure on I think, on you. yeah, no. Who, who says you have to get married these days anyway? Mm. I mean, you can meet somebody and yeah. just live with them, and you're, you're, what is it now? A year and a half later, they can still take half your assets. So, <laughs> you debate whether you're married or not. It doesn't make a difference. So, no, haven't met anyone yet. You realise that there's no one out there that's going to be 100% compatible with you, no matter what. I don't know if there is such a thing as a soulmate. I think the most important thing is finding your best friend and working from it from there. Mm. Unfortunately, with male and female best friend sort of thing, either one person takes it further and the other doesn't, yes. or the other yeah. takes it further. And so it's hard. But yeah. I enjoy people's company yeah. and I think you just at the end of the day want to meet someone you can do things with like yes. watch a movie yeah. or you know bum around yeah. or whatever yeah The best things in life are free but you can give them to the birds and bees I want the money We're uh, from SBS. Oh, hey. Hi, my name's Andrew. And I'm so, so am I. You're Andrew I'm too. I'm an Andrew. No, no, you're not Andrew too. You're Andrew something else. That's right. Just a bad joke. Uh, can I ask what you do? I'm a, an IT consultant. Of course. <laughs> like everybody is <laughs> like, nowadays. Like many people. How did you get into that? Um, 
sort of a luck of the draw through a friend. Yeah. Uh, I managed to score myself a help desk position initially and then just worked my way up through the ranks. You obviously had an aptitude for computers. Funnily enough, actually no. My aptitude is more for people management. Yeah. Um, I just use the, uh, the the base knowledge right. idea just to, to get up into the industry first uh, and then uh. move sideways from there. What were you doing before? Before I was actually in sales, so yeah. So it was good. It was good to get out of the whole sales and marketing sort of side of things and, right. and uh, away from the high stress yes. of that area into another high stress area. So. <laughs> to what extent do you live your work? Probably not to the extent of which my employers would probably want me to. I, um, that sounds healthy. <laughs> it, it's good. Oh, I've just come back from a six month holiday um, purely just because I needed to get away from the office and yes. it's given me a new lease on life. It's, yeah. uh, I do my time in the office to enable yes. me to uh, have a, a better social life, shall we say, yeah. or a better life out of the office. Is that something that you've had to work on? It is something because it's very easy to get caught up. Yeah with everything that's yes. going on in the office. Yeah. Um, but, uh, it, I mean, every workplace has its ups and downs and it's sometimes just good to focus on yourself. Six months is a long holiday. It is. You, yeah. you, did you intend to have a six month holiday? Did you? I actually intended to go for a, a lot longer. Did you? Um, yeah. But um, time sort of uh, six months away from home, uh, just with a, a bag on your back and so yeah. forth, it soon wore us down. Right. Um, so, but it was good. It was definitely a worthwhile experience. And you, us, we, two of you? Uh, my wife and I. Right. And obviously you both needed the break. Very much so. Was there a, was there a, a consensus as to what you should do in the break? Uh, she'd actually been trying me to step out of the office for a couple of years. Yeah. Uh, and of course I was reluctant to do so. Stepping away from your career for any length of time yeah. isn't good. But um, fortunately I managed to bow down to that sort of pressure and I'm glad yeah. I did because it really has opened both of our eyes. And was there something that triggered that? final relenting decision? <laughs> Just the, the monotony yeah. of the day to day, yeah. uh, feeling like the sheep in the herd, yeah. the usual sort of thing and it's now good to be able to keep in mind that in mind and try and keep out of that. What did you, did you decide that you would have to actually physically travel away from Sydney? Yeah, we spent yeah. six months in, in, in Asia, which was good and it, we, we were thinking more of Europe initially but we wanted to go for somewhere that was completely different. Mm -hmm. And how did you find the experience? Did, did you actually go through any kind of change? Did you reassess? It was good. Uh, I was. Uh, we both experienced changes individually as well as as a couple. Uh, we've been together now for about eight years. Um, we've always been very close, obviously, but to be able to do that and to rely on each other from simple things, from just trying to figure out where you're going to find breakfast, yeah. to actually having to find accommodation or where you're going to go yeah. next, yeah. it was great. There were certainly a lot of changes, and really the biggest one was probably that we realised there's a lot more to life than just earning a crust. Mm. This holiday, did it change anything about your future plans? Oh, without a doubt, absolutely. Yeah. We're uh, planning uh, perhaps ne within about the next 12 months to move back to Canberra, actually to live a lifestyle rather than to live work. Mm -hmm. um, Canberra gives us the ability to just slow down a little bit, uh, maybe get some, some acreage just outside of the city. You're not concerned that after six months of exotic holiday in Canberra might seem a little um, less than exciting? Uh, yes and no. Uh, Canberra also gives us a, the financial stability because uh, yeah. the cost of living down there is cheaper which enables us perhaps to get away to a right. few more of those exotic right. locations in the future. <laughs> so you'll pepper this, you'll pepper your life with little uh, absolutely. adventures. Oh, absolutely, because after being away for such a long period of time, I don't think yeah. we could go away for another six month period again. It right. was, it was, uh, it was yeah. difficult, yeah. but um, certainly away on one or two month stretches, which is something we definitely have plans for. What about the things that might hold you, like family, children? Uh, got plans for that as well. Yeah. Um, another reason for going to Canberra, it's easier right. to raise a, and, and have a young family. Um, that's, we're just going to have to take each day as it comes. I mean, life's not perfect, you're going to have yeah. to take your ups and your downs. Yeah. So. With my career sometimes I do, I do get caught up, yeah. but uh, we sort of use each other to bring each other mm. back down to earth and realise that the simple things in life are actually much better than, mm -hmm. you know. We try not to be too materialistic as well and, and so that was another thing that the travelling taught us. So you've got your lives together, pretty much? Well, I certainly hope so for a long time, that's right. Are you having a little break from work? Or are you... No, I'm just waiting for someone's going into the bank to grab some money out. <laughs> oh, that sounds good. <laughs> yeah, hopefully it's got some in there. Somebody's... Pardon? Somebody... Who are you waiting for? Oh, just a guy I work with. He's going in to get some money out while we're going out to do something. So not work? I... Pardon? Not work? No, 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 no. It's just a bit of a break at the moment. What do you do from here? Uh, locksmith. locksmith. Ah. I see. Locksmith. Day city, off. Just up there. No, it's not day off. No, we've got work to do. Do you? Just walk, coming back from a job now. Locksmith waiting for a 
a friend to, of the bring, to bring money out of a bank. That sounds suspicious. It does, know, mate. Doesn't it? He's got no gun on him, though, so it's all right. No, he it's doesn't all... need one. He just tumbles the locks. <laughs> That's it. Just pick them over. Do you ever have uh, interesting escapades and adventures as a result? Oh, not really. It's just sort of, it becomes run-of-the-mill sort of stuff. It's yeah. just weird people and yeah. some of the crazy things they ask for and they yeah. want to do. What but, sort um, of things? Oh, just key that'll open everything. There's no such thing. Uh -huh. Just ridiculous things that they see on TV, and they see it on TV, and they think that it can be done. Yeah. But uh, it doesn't happen that easily, <laughs> unfortunately. And to try and explain it to them is not yeah. the easiest thing to do either. Yeah. Not, not always uh, that. Uh, Are you diplomatic? Yeah, you've got to, you've got to be sometimes. <laughs> yeah. When they're paying, you've got to be uh, very uh, yeah. courteous, I suppose. A little bit about you. Where are you from? Um, I'm not so sure actually. You're not sure? No, I have no idea. I'm one of those people who are mixed. Yes. Mother's Many Japanese. Of us are. <laughs> Mother's Japanese. Yes. Father is Scottish. Yes. And um, Do you know how they Tokyo? met or where they met? Or? Yes, they met in Tokyo. Yes. They met in Tokyo about um, they're quite old actually, because my mother's seventy one, my father's eighty six or eighty seven mm -hmm. or eight or something. Mm -hmm. So quite a long time ago. Mm -hmm. um, I was born in Tokyo, then raised here from six until 18, then went back to Tokyo for university. So lived in both countries and also lived in Switzerland for two and a half years. So yes, I see what you mean, but you're not quite sure where you're from. <laughs> I have no idea anymore. Well, what do you call home? Do you call Sydney home? I do call Sydney home, yes. but I've never actually, don't really, I've never actually called myself an Australian. I mean, I am basically an Australian, but I'm you also an Japanese passport. as well. Yes. You have both two passports, two national? Um, I'm not supposed to, so <laughs> I, I can't quite give you an answer on I that see. one. I see. But you were born in Japan. Born in Tokyo. So, and you have an Australian passport, so you kind of... Uh... I am Australian, but my cultural background... Yes. I mean, being, for me, a nationality is a cultural background. Yes, that's right. So I do strongly feel Japanese. Yes. As well, but yes. I will never ever fit into the Japanese society that's because... Right. Yes. Do you feel you fit in here, Australian society? Um, I do know. I do know when I was younger. Yeah. So how did you deal with that? Because that would have been fairly... Well, when I was younger, what I hated is that when you meet somebody and then you tell them that you're half Japanese and they're automatically like, oh, you're Japanese. And I never, I never really liked that concept because yes. I'm not Japanese. Yes. They're mixed up. But yes, <laughs> you're all mixed up. What about the Scottish? <laughs> the Scottish, I think it's a stubbornness in the bump uh, of the nose, actually, but um, <laughs> it comes did, out. Can I, this is a really personal question, but I'm curious about this because for women it's always an issue. When you were growing up and you were different here, you looked different, how did you deal with that? Did you, was that a concern? Did you worry about that or did you um, welcome that? Well, I welcome that. I think it's because I had the background in Tokyo first, because mm -hmm. I lived in Tokyo till six. And yes. in Japan, you're even more different. Yes. Because I've got the black hair, but bigger yes. eyes, bigger yes. nose, yes. everything else. And yes. they really do treat you like a foreigner there. Yeah. yeah. So I went and to a normal kindergarten, yes. lived in a very international area. Yeah. But um, my mother actually put me into Japanese kindergarten, also Japanese primary school. Yes. So there you really don't fit in. Mm. But in that sense, I was lucky though, because my mother really raised me yeah. being proud of yes. being mixed. Yeah. Yeah. So, like there's a word called Ainoko, which is actually, it's a racial term now for being half Japanese. But if you translate it, I is love and Ko is child. So uh, I had uh, always uh, thought, <laughs> if just my yes. love child. I'm like, yeah, I am. <laughs> so I never really took it personally. Tell, do you know, did you ask your parents about their romance? Yeah, yes, they, they used to tell me quite well, my mother did. Yes. So. What, what's the story? Because it sounds as though it's an interesting story. <laughs> it is actually, oh is my it? god. Can you tell it us? Um, yes. Well, they, they met in Tokyo and um, fell in love and had a relationship for 10 years. 
Do you know how they met? In what circumstances? Um, I think it was work-related. Because mm -hmm. my father was over there on business quite a lot. So he was actually never really based in Tokyo, but he used to travel, go back and forth between Australia, Tokyo, mm -hmm. and London, I think. So uh, he was Scott, but living in, in Australia? Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Uh, yep, right. he was born in a boat. Huh? <laughs> on the way to Australia? <laughs> so there's a huge age gap. Between. Yes. Yeah, he's about 86 or 87, I yes. think, now. But, um, so they met in Japan yes. and had, I think, a 10-year relationship. And my mother was quite career-oriented as well. And was he still traveling all that time? Mm -hmm. Kind of going back and yes. forth, yes. based in both countries. That sounds as though it was in the past. I mean, did they then separate? They did, yes, when I was young. When you were very young? When I was very young, about six or seven. Yes. When, so, but it was strange that you separated by the time you came to Australia. Yeah, they separated actually right before, I think, yeah. we moved to Australia. Yeah, yeah. We moved here basically because it was difficult for me growing up in Tokyo. Mm -hmm. So that was the main reason why my mother actually wanted to move over here. Difficult in what sense? Um, in the racial sense. Culturally? Yeah. Cult really? Yeah. Mm. Was it much easier here? <laughs> it was actually. Yeah. It was much easier here. Yeah. Because they don't really pick on, like in Japan, they basically, when you're mixed, mm -hmm. because back then, because I was born in 1971, it wasn't as common as what it is now. Yes. It's actually more of a novelty now. Yeah. Whereas back then, it wasn't so much. So it's more benign interest yeah. now, perhaps. So when you're the one and only one out of 50 kids that look different. Yes. What, did, what, what about names? What did your mother name you? Um, I have two names. It's my English name is Anne, and Japanese name is Ayako. And I called for. Well, I was using Aya in Japan until six, and then when we moved over here, it turned into Anne. Mm -hmm. And used it until I was about nineteen or so, and then um, went back to Aya actually. So you're so, Aya now to. I'm Aya now. Aya. And uh, do you speak Japanese? Yes. Do you, 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 keep language yep. skills up. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you use it in your job at all? What do you do? Um, I'm actually a jewelry designer now. And I have my own shop at the ANA Hotel. To start I was going to ask you about your earrings. Ago. Thank you. Yes, I do these things. <laughs> yes. And so I started that about eight weeks ago. But eight weeks ago? Mm -hmm. Very new business. Very new business. <laughs> That's pretty brave. Thank you. Well, it runs in the family. Business? Yeah. Or bravery? Both. <laughs> So jumping into things. Is now, am I right in thinking that you're designing and selling jewelry to Japanese clients, customers? Japanese as well. As well. As well. Uh, there's a lot of Americans that stay at the hotel, mm -hmm. and I'm trying to get local clients. As well, <laughs> so. And what? What? Apart so. from the earrings, what other jewelry? Anything? Everything? Um, everything. Rings. And you have it made? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. A special interest in any uh, stones, or is that just? Um, sassy pearls a lot, yes. and opals. Yes. Because my mother was black opal merchant originally, so she was a what? A black opal merchant. Oh, a mm -hmm. merchant. Yeah. So and it does run in the family. Yes. It does run in the family. <laughs> yeah. But I used to interpret before that. Mm, of course, that would be logical. It was easy. For who? For who? What sort of you know, companies or government? Um, in Japan, I was in radio, oh, yeah. and also I did quite a lot of television work. So interpreting for. You've had a variety of things. Is this something that you really wanted to do, jewelry design? Is this something you've always wanted to do? Um, kind of, but I think when it runs in, when it's a bit of a family thing, you do kind of tend to yes. run away from it because yeah. you need to go off and find your own thing. Yes. Which you did first. I did that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. Is there a man in your life? There was. I'm separated. <laughs> there he is. He's three and a half. <laughs> three and a half. Yep. I have so. A little man. A little man. Yes. Very, very little man. What do you do with him while you're working? How do you run a business with a, with a son? Um, he goes to daycare. There's a Japanese kindergarten. Mm. So it's a Japanese-based kindergarten. So yes. he's yes. Um, actually light brown haired and blue eyed and speaks Japanese perfectly. <laughs> he would be a real novelty in Tokyo. <laughs> he's a real novelty. <laughs> but what about his father? His father's living in Switzerland. He was half Swiss, half South African. And you met? We met here. <laughs> so. But it didn't last. No, two and a half years. Two and a half years. But it was good Up while married. it lasted. It oh, was. Yeah. It was. Are you still kind of okay? Reasonable yeah. terms? And you went through our really tough, yeah. tough stages.
Pretty difficult. Do you think you'd do it again? Get married? Yeah. I think so. Yeah? I think so. Difficult without having some of this specific in mind, I suppose. No, but I think I think you never know until yeah. you try something. And yeah, and I, I still do believe in all those soulmates and the one and that yeah. kind of stuff. So if I find one, I will. <laughs> Excuse us a second, do you have a minute? We're from SBS, we're making a documentary, so Yes. I want to talk to you a bit about success. You look like a successful businessman, but because we don't know that for a fact. What do you think about success and how do you measure it? I think success is probably more of a state of mind than anything else. And uh, if you feel good about what you do, you're successful. Can we ask if you, what's, what's your state of mind? Are you successful? Uh, I feel good because I've just come from an Ian Thorpe charity lunch and it's been very successful. He's raised a lot of money for sick children yes. and that's success by any measure. Right. And he's a fantastic guy and that's the epitome of success. Can we ask what sort of business you're in? Uh, I'm in law and in computers. Law and computers. <laughs> Are they compatible businesses? Absolutely. Obviously. Absolutely. Yeah. Very successful combination. <laughs> Is it? What about play? Where does play come into your life? Play is very important. You've got to have the right balance. Yeah. You've got to have the right balance. How do you do that? Um, I mean, how do you do that? Well, I, I, I enjoy my work, so I get yeah. balanced no matter whether I'm playing or working because right. play is my work. And is your work uh, something that you, do you take it home? Yeah, always. Yeah. Always. So... It's in your head. Yeah, yeah. It's when you're asleep. Is there anything else you do? Uh... No, I enjoy what I do. Yeah. I'm quite happy. Contentment, that's also success. Yeah. If you're content and happy with what you do, that's success. Were well, you a naturally positive thinker? I think I am. I think I am a natural optimist. Yeah. Uh, probably sometimes more so. And then uh, people say, hey, you were right. So I said, I told you so. Yeah. What if, when were you wrong? Did you ever wrong? Oh, uh, <laughs> I always admit when I'm wrong. It yeah. just happens so rarely I'm not used to it. <laughs> Would, would your wife, are you married? Yes, no. Would your wife agree with you? I don't think we'll get into that. What's your background, your, your family background? Your, what, what sort of grounding is that built on? Um, basically, I, I come from a family who, who wasn't wealthy. My father came here as a migrant uh, from, and from uh, Egypt. And uh, he worked his way up as a clerical assistant and uh, had no particular professional training. And uh, I think we were just brought up to uh, know what the work ethic was. Yes. So, you know, from an early age, I was yeah. sort of a paper boy and a, I was a postman and a cab driver and yeah. all sorts of things. And yeah. people say, what kind of training is that for a lawyer? <laughs> I Pretty say, good. well, it's, you know, you get to meet a lot of people and yeah. Uh, yeah. you don't come up as part of the old boys club because yes. we didn't have one. Yeah. And uh, I think it's just a, a much better life experience to come up that way. What so, made you want to become a lawyer? Oh, I was the kid who kept asking why to everything, and the answer was either it's the law of physics or it's the law. And yeah. So I loved science and I love the law. <laughs> right, and so you ended up in and scientific up being, law. Being, that's, that's absolutely right. Yeah. That was the explanation. Is, is your, you were saying your, your father was, uh, uh, by the sound of it, a kind of a role model for you? Yeah, I think in to some sense. extent, in the sense that he was uh, uh, worked hard yeah. and uh, looked after the family. Uh, and I think we just had a, a pretty good upbringing, so, yeah. But a very different upbringing to what, um, say, an Australian uh, kid... So, so, oh, no, I don't think so. Yeah. I think it was probably typical Australian yeah. upbringing in, in, in the real sense. Yeah. Um, I mean, I wouldn't say we were poor, but we're, we're absolutely by no means wealthy. Right. Um, but, you know, during the 50s and 60s, uh, yeah. probably a pretty conventional Australian family, I would right. think. Right. Uh, yeah. And are you still that? Would you still describe your your own family as conventional Australian family? Oh, no, I don't think you, you can when you um, uh, become a little more wealthy than the average. I mean, you, you can pretend you're still normal, but to some extent you're not. Mm. So, uh, but that, in your case, it was entirely self-made. Yeah, that's true. That's and, true. Uh, that's, that's I mean, we didn't very win Lotto Australian. or anything like that. But, no, no. Uh, yeah. but and very... I, I think that's the difference in the sense that people say, what do you still work ridiculous hours? Say, so, well, I don't change just because I've been reasonably successful. Yeah. Um, and I enjoy what I do. So why should I stop? That would be stupid. I'd be bored to tears if I stopped. Right.